We're gonna go right into doing some refinements, thanks to feedback from the second beta, once again. And uh, we're gonna be doing some quick and easy stuff right away to start with. And we've got four minutes on the clock. Let's see how many things we get done in four minutes. We're gonna nerf the HP of Knight 1. He has a little bit too much for Dungeon Zero. Uh, we're gonna go to Knight, uh, Knight 1, and we go to the hit points. That's about 100. What's the other guy? There's a sneaker guy who has like a, so few hit points. It's too, it's too, he's, he's the one that has a really, really low. He's 20. This guy should be at least down to 80. Maybe like, maybe 70. Okay, good stuff. Boom. Wow. The whole thing done already? You kidding me? I love easy things. Okay, copy that. Oh yes, let's try the blink distance of the boots starting a little bit lower and increasing as you boost the ability. Okay, so we're gonna go start off on Z0 and give us a bunch of ability points so we can upgrade our abilities real quick and start with the boots. Go to this thing called, function called start blink and this is where it de determines how far you're gonna go right here where it says quantity. Oh, and then it does. No, it's the blink disc factor. It is a dodge. Oh, blink disc factor. Where, where is not? Huh. I know there's a. I'm looking for some numbers here. I know. I, I know how to where to tweak this at. Maybe it's here. Ah, this is it. Block disc. Cool. This is what I was looking for. Quantity equals zero. It does 1.5. That's only if we're doing a dodge. Otherwise, it does 3.0 plus quantity minus one zero to two. Quantity's one. That means that's gonna be zero zero one or two. Okay. Three. Oh, you already can upgrade it. Let's see, still got a minute and a half on this clock. So here's our. Oops. The other day I was playing and it just felt like there it goes a really nice far distance, but it feels like a little bit too much for its for its level zero level one basically. So we go all the way. I'm not really seeing that. There's we, here we go. Block disc and then actual disc. The show me that. Show me that. Oh hey, I forgot to put up. <laughs> forgot something important here. What? Oh, we get the chat window. Might as well be able to chat, huh? Get the chat going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so our, our block distance is three. So you're telling me, if I upgrade that, and I go here, now see the box distance is still three. Page unresponsive. You can't load the chat. What's wrong with you, chat? Something's borked over here. You so borked. Google Chrome not responding. Mm -mm -mm. I restarted Chrome. It's still giving me the wheel. What's with you? What? Don't tell me I have to switch to Safari. The unexpected choice. Uh, we're going to Safari today. Is it working? It's working. Whoa. Safari's working. All right, cool. We're in the chat now. Hello. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so the thing is the quantity. Uh, Various. Yo, hello. Hello. How you doing, Various? Which one's those was quantity? You're doing well. Good to hear, man. I'm doing well also. Just got some um, really fun stuff to be working on today as usual i mean making video games is got it should be fun right oh it's get ability level for effective ability that's why because it's a blink it does ability otherwise it does dodge which always does level zero yeah, okay so we should do we have is dodge yet there we go we got his dodge now now we can go here instead of effective ability for the quantity we can go is dodge then we use the ability dodge it's just gonna use the same thing anyways okay we're just gonna do that ability there now that allows our quantity to be upgraded uh, for the boots ability. So that means the boots can start at a certain amount of blink distance and increase as it goes. And if we upgrade it, okay, that's a lot load. And multiply it by a half if it's boots. And uh, here we go to um, get blink pause. And it does all this math here. I'm thinking, okay, so our base value should be 2.5. Where I'm thinking, like at, at ability level zero, this just feels a little bit strong. So now we're adding in half. This should be clamp F. Oh, this should be a float. Okay, right, see what that math does. All right, so the goal here is just to make the blink um, portion of the boots ability just a little bit less tiny bit less than it was before not too much I know that before I was only doing a 2.0 and now we should be doing about a 2.5 when we start 1.5 that's not right why is it what oh if quantity zero that means our blink disc factor oh also should be a float oh and here's where we should multiply by 0.5 okay makes a little more sense down here blink disc factor times that and uh, there we go okay so now we should be starting at 2.5 and we upgrade the ability once and we should go to 3.0 and upgrade it again we go to 3.5 i think i did the math wrong actually though so it might not be doing that let's see 0.5 okay cool how does that feel still feels pretty good okay if I'm, if I'm standing right here, blink one, two, three blocks. I'm at level two. Okay, it's still doing 2.5 at level two. That's what I thought. I did, did the math a little bit wrong there. Here, 3.0, which that should be 3.5. Okay, here's where we should really 
uh, this is where we should be applying the 0 0.5, but also subtracting an amount for get blink paw. So right here, we're subtracting out quantity. Really, this should be this. Do all this math back in that other function so we can kind of determine whether what happens for the boots ability versus dodge and all that. So this is block dist passed in directly. And we don't need to blink dist factor anymore. We got a block dist. Okay, so we'll say instead of this um, quantity equals zero, we're just trying to do that for dodge. So if it's dodge, we start with only a distance of 1.5. Otherwise, we start with a distance of 2.5. Is blink, right? Does that happen for blink or dodge? This just needs to be ability equals C ability blink. Then our block disk plus equals quantity minus one. Okay, we can move quantity back to that is a clamp F. And then this one too. This one should be an int. Yeah, naturally. Good. Okay, then over here, we've got this else if ability equals boots. Then our quantity is minus 0 0.5. No, just minus one. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's 0 0.5 times that. Okay, that looks a lot better. Good stuff. Okay, so this is a lot more clear to me now what's going on for each one of the abilities. We've got a, we've got a nice block disk. I hear we need to use that though. Block disk. Okay, okay, so yeah. Dodge, it's just 1.5. Actually, here, let's do this. If is dodge, block disk equals 1.5. This makes it a little, even more clear where we've got this 2.5, blank, start, and there. Oh, plus. All right, there. Now it's very clear what the block distance is getting set to for each one of the ability. And we don't even need to rely on this. <laughs> Man, I'm getting really nitpicky with this. Oh, all right, I love it. Good stuff. Okay, 1.5, 2.5 plus quantity, 5 plus a half times the quantity. All right, let's see how that feels. Okay, I'm standing right there. I blink. I can do blink about, I can blink about three blocks. And okay, I go up to level two and I stand in the same place and I can blink a little farther. And we're back to 3.0. Upgrade boots again and we got 3.5. Very cool. Okay, the one thing I think I should we should do is make blink 3.0 to start with, but probably 0.5f times the quantity. And let's steal that out. So that'll make the blink in general go a little bit farther. Maybe it could be a little bit higher per ability level too. Cool. Plans to incorporate a Twitch extension? Yes, there is. Oh yeah, that sounds cool. Yes. Yeah, so I, I was reading through um, all that about how Borderlands does it. Thanks for sharing with that, uh, by the way. I haven't really seen many Borderlands. I haven't played Borderlands much, so. Um, yes, uh, there is going to be a Twitch extension where um, a streamer can, you know, be streaming and as a as a viewer, you can inspect my stream a little bit. Like, yeah, like there's not a stats menu right now until you die or win, but players can inspect your stats. But I was thinking also like it would kind of be uh, like it would also be able to um, do like random drops and maybe a player could control a, your sky bot, maybe something like that. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of fun things that could be done to integrate with Twitch. But yes, plans are to do that. Um, I've actually got that code started. I got a little um, chat extension type thing that can they can like watch your chat and um, it um, I need to work on that some more so basically I need to integrate that chat into my server and then the server can send commands to the game client and you can log in with your twitch account to kind of like connect it all so there's a little there's a lot of little moving pieces to get all that working and then also kind of deciding what kinds of things players can do w uh, with your stream how they can influence your your I mean your run and uh, all that kind of stuff so yes plans are to do that thanks for mentioning that that's a very important thing to these days. Okay, I love it. I'm leaving it like this. 4.0 is the max for for blink. A blink can always go a little bit farther than the boots can, but now the boots starts at a little bit more of a reasonable level. Good stuff. Okay, let's review this and check it in. So now instead of passing in a quantity, we're passing in a block distance for the blink position. And now we've got that is dodge. Quantity is just getting the quantity of the actual ability. Ah, this is so much clearer here. The block distance starts at one. If it's dodge, it's 1.5. Oh, this is a little bit. So jam. What's this? What's this right here? Jeez, who coded that? And uh, blink at 3.0 plus 0 0.5 per level. And then boots is 2.5 plus per level. We're passing in block distance there. Boom, done. Right. This, the, the, the. Okay, we're going to write this a little bit clearer though. Get commit so that it's ready to put right into my change log. Um, made, no, no, this isn't, I didn't really nerf it. I made, made the boots dash distance increase as you level up the 
reboot ability. That was the main part of that. All right, good. Okay, onward with doing some quick things here. This is a really quick thing. That last thing was not that quick. It took me a whole 15 minutes. What? 15 minutes. Make a little top for the checkpoint portal area. Easy, all right? Um, what I'm talking about here is this little area on the ship. So first let's go to, what's, oh, whoa, I got, well, I've never seen this before. I somehow was able to get my fuzzy finder window open and stuck open. Crazy, I've never seen that before. Start over, started it over. Okay, started over. So we need to be on the ship. Negative one, Z, negative one. And um, the thing, map ship, I think it's just map ship. Yeah, we've got a little K right here. This little K block is what we're talking about. I wanna make this have a little bit of a graphic on it. Um, let's go, let's create the graphic real quick. Um, we got T art models, copy, DSC, engage. Yeah. Oh, it's in DS engage C, not zero, six. Oh, it's in, I think it's B6. No, it's B0. Yes, there it is. All right, days engage B0. Engage B0, copy that to, uh, if we have a portal, but it's inactive, check. Point, yeah, point portal. Whoa, Woo checkpoint portal, disable, but if it's not even there, whatever. Did I, did I use the A? Okay, yeah, off A, zero, block. We got checkpoint portal. We don't want it to trigger or anything. We just want a really simple, okay, we'll go to data, copy checkpoint portal to joint portal off. No, and then make C tags and da -da -da. Uh, checkpoint portal off and create block checkpoint portal. Now can we have a checkpoint? If we don't have a checkpoint, then we create a checkpoint portal off. Okay, so we don't need a name for this. It's not a dais. It's a position render point portal off. Doesn't need to be really shaded or shadowed. But we do want a team color 18, 18, 16 through 23. Team, it's not floating, doesn't have any sounds, doesn't have any particles, doesn't have a collision, doesn't have any children. Just that, all right. And let's get to our art for that. Point portal off. Want to see one square type thing here. Probably make that night not so bright. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Shouldn't have a portal with this save. All right, cool. There it is. It's a little bit high though. Oh, and it needs to rotate. All right, we need an M flag. Rotate. Oh, hot. If we have a if we have a position offset of negative something, let's try. Let's see if six is too low. Yeah, it's too low. All right, let's try four. Still invisible. All right. Oh, almost visible. Okay, I guess it wasn't. <laughs> I guess it wasn't that high. Seemed like it was. Stuff. We can see it there. Okay, it's weird when you do this offset. We gotta change that back. And we'll take this guy and make it a little darker. Hey. Hey, what's up, King Nothing? Yes, this is, well, yeah, in general, it's based on the same engine, but things have progressed so much since those days that uh, it's practically a brand new engine. Um, yeah, but it's, it, it does have its same roots in using Coco's 2DX. So a lot, I, I took Coco's 2DX's renderer, basically, and uh, use, I use that, and everything else in Coco's 2DX has now been replaced by some other stuff called KitFu, which is a, a nice engine wrapper layer that goes around, um, it can use use Coco's 2DX basically or can use my publisher's engine so it's just easy when we go to um put this game on uh, consoles or whatever, that it's just already ready. It already uses their engine. If we do two layers of this, it might look a little better. It's a little bit better. Cool. All right. Still a little bit bright. I don't even use shading, so we don't need that. Okay, that'll do. It's good enough. Oh, you know what? Actually, it would nice be it would be nice if it were the opposite color. Let's see what the spell opposite. I know how to spell opposite. It's got two P's, two O's for sure. There we go. That's a little better. Maybe. Actually, man. <laughs> Nah, I changed my mind. I like the orange better for this little object. Makes it distinct versus other stuff. Okay, cool. Keep it a team. Let's check us in. Clean it up and get, we need to get out a few things. Get add uh, one of these. I'll take one of these guys right here. Yep. Uh, I'll take one of these guys right here. Commit world. Art models. Data. Checkpoint thingy. Do the, Made the checkpoint thingy do the thingy. Make a little top for the checkpoint portal area. Cool, that was kind of quick. It took 10 minutes, dang, kind of quick. All right, another one down though. How about this? Don't zoom in the camera when buying hit points. Done, consider it done. It's already done, practically. Uh, okay, we're gonna need not max hit points. Let's go for half hit points. Too we need to go find some um, place to buy some health. It'd be nice if we moved our position there so we just start there every time. And then, oh, oh sweet. It's right here, so awesome. 
awesome. Cool. We'll start right there. X one. Okay, cool. That's great because there's no enemies nearby, which means they won't it won't zoom in the camera from them. Is it lens? Oh, hold on. On HP changed. Is there a zoom thing somewhere? That is push effect zoom. Not silent. Damage we hit. Is this how it zooms the camera in other cases? Maybe it is. Close. No, no, it's not that. No, this is not it. It's like add battle timer or something. Oh, why did we get to this file? Ugh. Add battle? Battle. There it is. Bump the battle timer. It's also a damage for real type of thing. I'm pretty sure it's bumping the battle timer. But we'll set a breakpoint there. So what I'm trying to do is catch where the heck I'm, I'm zooming the camera in when you buy health, because I'm not seeing exactly where it is. Oh, second time's the charm. So I'm trying to catch where the heck that is. This is like a, a big code base, and I'm trying to find a needle in a haystack here, because I can't quite remember. There's a lot of places where this happens, and I'm like not sure which one, which needle I should pull out of the stack here. Son of a... Third time's the charm, maybe? There, there goes another 15 seconds of my life. Gone! Down the drain! Come on, baby. Third time's the charm. Nice. Oh! <laughs> It works. All you gotta do is believe. That's all there is to it. Just gotta believe. Aha! Here we are. Buy some health. Dude, it didn't zoom in the camera. Oh! The pain! Pain, I feel. It's all good. It's all good. How did it... Okay, I was playing the other night, and I bought some health. Okay, that's popping the battle timer from behavior warning okay yeah that must have been it then there must have been some enemy somewhere nearby that must have warned me right as i was buying health let's see what happens if i just buy some health if the camera zooms in or not here i am i'm at half health i'm buying some health the camera does not zoom in whatsoever but as soon as this enemy comes over where's he at come on over here he shoots at me camera will zoom in a little bit there it must have been coincidence. I guess let's do one quick thing. Bump battle timer. Whoa, did you see that? My grep had a space in it. That was so weird. Okay, it could have happened from a, an enemy doing a warning. Comment it out. Um, set target. Oh, that's also commented out. What am I looking at these ones? These are only if it's damaged. See, damaged for real, make sure that it is for real. So if I had been healed, I wouldn't have been damaged for real. So it, it couldn't have been these two. Surely it could not have been. Logic says that it couldn't have been those that meant some and that's the only other one it would have been this warning so okay i can second just gonna like let go of this one yeah i think what happened is the other night i was playing and i bought some health right when an enemy targeted me okay so we're just gonna throw that one in the done pile all right ha don't play or fade any music after the erosion in the dungeon mode so there's this thing called tick erosion and it goes through and it erodes all the enemies I'm talking oh this is kind of a cool thing actually uh, i've created this dungeon where you run away from, well i'll show you guys here we go let's go to x zero z two and this is a dungeon where you kind of use your boots ability. Let's try this out. Oh, but it won't have music playing. So anyways, the world, the world just starts falling away and you got to run. Get as fast as you can through this, this level before you... What the... Oh, no, we can't do lock doors. That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> Don't auto lock doors in and eroding. Friend clear text for ability cannot update. So you can get ahead of the wave a bit. But if also, if you fall off, basically you just get warped to the next area. So there's, there's, you lose a little bit of health each time you fall, but you could fall a bunch of times and still be alright. It's kind of, it's very difficult if you want to get all the items in this dungeon. This, you like the smoke effect? Cool. Yeah, so that's this dungeon. This is, this is really fun because I've always wanted to do this where there's just a different type of dungeon. So far there's been a bunch of dungeons where you kind of just explore the dungeon. There's a boss. There's items you find. But this one is totally different. You're like running away from a, 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 the world eroding behind your feet. I do think that there's one thing about this though that I probably should do. Is instead of the world eroding. Because right now when the world just... just gets destroyed behind you, you can't go back and get the items. And I think that will piss off uh, some players. Uh, some players will be like, whoa, this is exciting. Wow, I'm into this. But some people will be like, whoa, I hate this. That I can't go back. You know what I mean? So I think there's a way to do both of those. If I do a giant wall, I'm gonna do like a, this huge wall that's just coming at you. And if, it if you touch the wall, it's got spikes on it so you get hurt. And as the wall pushes you all the way through to, to the end of this one section, it'll, go it'll keep going and you'll be able to turn off a different way and get basically behind where the wall was so you could go back if you really wanted to you could go back so you still got this feeling that whoa you got this this urgent feeling like you got to run away from a wall but still as as a player you can choose to go back if you really want to if you're that kind of player so i think that way it'll be the best of both worlds 
So uh, we need to actually turn on music here. I think there is some music playing already in the background on the stream. Hopefully that works this time. Um, but I'm gonna turn on music in the game as well. So we're gonna have two, <laughs> two layers of music here, but I need to hear things. So we see if the world is actually playing any music after it does this. We got this thing where it's called erosion. There's all these things that happen here while we're eroding. Ah, this is ultimately just setting the time scale. That's right. This tick countdown thing though, it does play the countdown. It does the announcement, but and then afterwards it does do countdown victory. Is that it? World set MVP. Oh, right, right. So that doesn't play any music either, but we're also not doing a countdown. But other, other than that, we're doing the erode entities, which just looks, yeah, there's no, there's no music playing here. Okay, let's, we gotta try this again. <laughs> um, we gotta turn on music. I think we already did. Yeah, okay. I basically wanna play this through to the end and see if the music changes. Here we can speed up time a little more. Nice. This is even more exciting. I love it. I like keeping it right behind me. I like to feel the, the pressure. Okay, it didn't do it either that time. There's no music playing here. I just needed to check that. Cool. Totally fine. Don't play or fade into music after we do the erosion. We, we're not doing that. So I can get rid of that also on my list. Um, this is a good... We need, I'm glad I noticed this. That the doors auto lock in the dungeon. Sometimes you go to a room in the dungeons and it'll lock all the doors in the room so that you can... So you're stuck in there until you beat the enemies. But that shouldn't happen if it's in... Ero when the world is eroding. So let's do that again. How does that whole feature system work? Um, I think it's a room flag. So in dungeon, dungeon.h, rooms, there's a C room for all the room flags. I think it's just C room lock. Yeah, okay, it does the walls there. Oh, there's an entity called room lock. That's right. Okay, let's do this. Instead of modifying, I know that room lock is an entity which has an AI. Because here it is, is this thing called room lock and it's got this smart thing where it's like, ah, I'm gonna lock the doors around me. But instead of modifying the AI, we can just make it so it doesn't even create a room lock if it's a speed dungeon so i think it's this function called is speed dungeon let's see oh no, is dungeon speed not is dungeon speed there we go okay so let's see if we play that first little bit where it locked me in that one room it should not lock me there should be no keys in this kind of dungeon that if, if, there's, if, if there's a dungeon where you're the whole thing is being destroyed there shouldn't be keys you should have to find and there shouldn't be rooms that lock on you that's just like panic you're like oh my god i can't get out of this room and there's this, this Oh, I'm about to die. There's no way I could stop it. It's beyond my control as a play. Yes, look at this. This door did not lock on us. Very good stuff. Okay, good. Way to go. That was a really quick fix. I love how quick fixes can be quick like that. Get commit source. Don't lock the doors. Don't type it if you can yank it. Yanking it. Yanking it. Big Y yank. Good stuff. Okay, there's another one down. And oh, a friendlier text for operability cannot be upgraded. I've been meaning to do this forever. Good stuff. This is such an easy one. String and text cannot be. Uh... That's it. Okay, when an ability can't be upgraded, we gotta find a, a friendlier way to say that. There's two abilities. There's the dodge ability and the punch ability, which you start with, and they can be replaced by a better ability. This ability can be replaced by a better one? Let's see if that, that's is that what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? Here I am, if I wanna upgrade my punch ability, this ability can be replaced by a better one? Hmm. I mean, it's better than it's better than this can't be upgraded. I don't know. I don't know how else to write that right now. Whatever. We'll just keep it like that. Okay, okay. Oh right, the mini boss at D zero. Huh. This guy was a little too easy. Oh, we got music. Turn that off. Because he recovered. He just got hit. And let's see what kind of enemy he is. I was hitting him the other. I was playing the game last night, I think. And I was hitting this mini mini boss, and he was just getting worked too easily. So we are at negative one, two, three, four. Oh, he's an archer. Negative one, and this is negative about there. Weird. Okay, we do need this sword though. Gotta get this sword, man. How else am I gonna fight this guy the right way? Oh, 1900. That explains it. Good stuff. Okay, here we are. I've got a sword, and I can just keep hitting him, and he just dies really quick. It's like so easy. Because the archer, his warning effect effect get worn oh well let's, we got to pay attention to what's going on with his ai something in his ai is getting delayed 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 
Let's turn the time down a little bit slower, and I just hit him. Aim, attack, aim, delay. Oh, because his delay is super huge. Oh, I, know, I got I got this. When a warning gets truncated, truncated, yeah, truncate. There's this thing called truncate timer, and um, it allows an attack to be truncated by another attack. And um, we basically want to make this happen for any any boss. Hey, you know what? I think we're gonna make this a function called whoa whoa is any boss and dot h function called is boss creep and his mini boss is any boss. Love it. Y for J P is is any boss. All right. So if it's any boss. If this is boss creep or this is mini boss or ai.flags dot has c ai mini mini boss. Okay, what that's gonna allow this guy to do is when I hit him, his attack will get truncated, but he'll his delay timer will also get set back to zero so he can quickly act again. But that will only happen for bosses or mini mini bosses or mini bosses. Basically the entities that should be smart. Yeah, there we go. Now he's attacking faster. Wait, no, he's not. Oh, that only happens for truncate timer. How about this? Let's go to Archer and we're gonna make of another behavior we're gonna add this to basically every entity that might be a mini mini boss we've got to follow fail safe but also after that we've got wait rate becoming for awakened um this is um i'm just gonna call this truncated it doesn't matter what mode we're in it matters if we are invincible in our hit points if hp invincible oh it's not gonna work okay that's not gonna work at all because our ai is not gonna be running <laughs> basically if we have a delay timer like if i if i if this entity set a delay like like started attacking right and it when it starts attacking it sets a delay timer of like 1.5 seconds and that basically disables its ai for those a whole 1.5 seconds so can't do it this way we got to do it in the end when we do on hp change and um an entity gets hurt and it is one of these mini mini bosses or whatever then it shouldn't be so we're gonna we're trying this reset uh, we're gonna basically create a little bit of code that resets the, the ai's delay timer if uh, this um this, this all happens so this is also gonna change the way the boss fight is so I kind of really got to check the boss and the mini boss so if we have AI we're damaged for real it's not from ourselves. I think these matter and e dot is any boss no and e dot AI dot delay timer okay see how that goes basically that should make it now so his delay timer gets reset to zero every time I hurt a boss so now his attacks aren't getting truncated at all Huh, why was... Oh, I'll, we probably shouldn't do this if we have a truncate timer. Hmm, this isn't working yet, right? What we did already is enough. Yeah, that kind of worked. Basically, uh, it made him a lot less uh, just stand there and get hit type of enemy. Keep this code though for a little bit. Maybe I'll one day I'll come back to this and better. Okay, good. Good stuff. Good enough. It's better. He's better than he was before. Did I? Was that a nice clean? Oh, dang. Committed committed some art with that. Dang it. Oh, well. That's all good. Okay, we're doing on time here. Close. Okay. Uh, sorry. Okay. I wanted to do a couple fun things here. Let's make it so you can pick up items by blinking over them. In the movie system when you throw a boomerang it could pick up items okay so we're gonna generalize this method right here where the boomerang is picking up items we're gonna make this a function of move system and uh, void move system up items for an entity entity e uh, and we're also gonna give it a box B oh we also need an owner so sometimes an entity sometimes an entity might not be the actual owner like for example when you when it's the boomerang you also got to find who owns the boomerang okay but we can we we can determine this by the E. Oh, we don't need this either. That. Yeah. All right. So now we can be smart about how we get our owner. So owner, if E is a player, then owner is E. Otherwise, E is or the, play, the owner is credit E for the, basically the crediting entity. So now we can make this part of the namespace. Right. Make sure our boomerang still works though. Make sure I didn't mess anything up with the boomerang by changing that owner variable there. So let's throw some items on the ground here. Let's throw it up. There's a gold piece. Blinked. Oh, nice. Cool. Cool, yeah. The boomerang can still pick up items. Okay, but I also want to be able to blink over things and pick them up. So when the move system performs a blink, we can mimic how the boomerang picks up items. Hmm. I'm trying to decide whether I should change the way the block size works there. Eh, whatever. We'll work it out here with the other thing. Okay, where, where are we? Think there's a variable called blink desk. Oh, yeah. There it is. Move and clear. E position equals blink desk. Blink desk clear. Boom. 
Oh, okay. Before we started all this, we have a E with last boss. No, where is it? Weird. The last position somewhere. Oh, there it is. Tick move entity. This is in tick movement. I'm pretty sure last boss has already been set. Because, yeah, we go tick entity and then tick movement happens in tick entity. Okay. So we want to create a box that had that covers the whole blink range where we started at, where we end at, and then add in a little bit. I like this. I like this two block width for the BS right there. So I think we can just say B dot A. Shoot. We got to do this. Wait, yeah, we can say B dot A equals E dot position dot last pause. B dot B equals E dot position dot pause. Here's where we got to kind of mess with things because A, A dot X might be less than or greater than B dot X. And that would be kind of weird for how it tries to calculate the collision detection. It wouldn't work. So if B dot A dot X is less greater than B dot B dot X, then expression swap B dot A dot X B dot B dot X. Yeah. And then uh, this one, the same kind of thing for the Y. So B dot A dot Y is greater than B dot B dot Y and swap the Y's. Yeah, that should work. We don't really care about the Z position. And then we can add in a little bit of the BS and then pick up items. Okay. Okay. We're going to set a breakpoint on this one. I'm not sure if this is math is all right. So we got to step through it and make sure every little step of this math is super tight. It should be mathematical. Bah. 7.0. Point oh. I gotta reset the way my debugger's working here. It's not, sometimes it's not doing the breakpoints right. Oh yeah. Right. Ah, what happened? Come on, baby. Debug. All we gotta do is get the debugger started. Oh yeah, we're in business now. Didn't even have to kickstart it. All right, let's put some money on the ground. We're gonna blink this way. All right. I'm blinking to the left now, which means my B dot A. Yeah, yeah. So here's a good example. We've got a B dot A of 1630, but a BB of 1582 so we need to swap the x's at least we need to swap the y's too the y's 2170 and the or the yeah whatever okay so if b.a.x swap there you go we swap 1582 with 1630 and then same thing with the y's we're gonna swap the 2166 with the 2171 and then now we're gonna add in this this is what the other part i'm kind of concerned about is this gonna work if i already if i swap my b's my a and my b does adding the bs the bs should work fine if i don't a subtract it it's already less so we're subtracting from it and then we should get even less so 1566, 2150. Of course, those are less than 1630 and 2171. Then add it to the B, 46. Yeah, that should work fine. Okay, then we pick up items. So we got our owner. It should be me. Good, good. That was smart. Yep, it worked correctly. And we got our vector. We got collisions. We are colliding with one item. That one piece of gold, right? Owner that pick up item. Boom. Obj. What's obj? Obj is an item. Item gold one. Everything worked just fine there. Okay, let's keep running. Hopefully it keeps running okay it works somehow we're way over here and creating abilities and our, our screen's off but it's okay we're still working okay this time i'm gonna blink there i blink swapping our y's on this one yeah there okay we're gonna turn off the well turn that off run that in the um, got a little bit too funky. We're gonna just run it from the start. I have no idea why that happens. Sometimes while I'm debugging, my screen gets permanently shifted. The camera is no longer focused on the player. I need to blink over it though. Yeah, I think that worked. Oh, it'll help if I have uh, full blink level. So cool. I can pick up items by blinking over them now. Before it wouldn't work. You would you would blink over something and it would just. Oh, I'm seeing a little pixel swimming over here. Dang it! I thought I fixed that this morning. Ay, pixel swimming. Here's some gold. Boom. Ah, I love it. That's so cool. You can pick up items with blinking. Love it. Awesome. Okay, let's review this. Check that in. Pick up items. Check that the boomerang still works. It uses the pick up items method. Here's our blink. Block sizes and all that stuff. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's going to work fine. Pick up items. We did the owner correct. It all worked. Boom. Check it in. Okay, ducky. Be able to pick up items with blinking over them. Done! Oh, yeah. All right, let's review what we did on today's stream. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten things on today's stream. That's a, that's a lot. A lot of things. Pretty sweet. I love it. Here's something I'm really interested in. I can't wait to do. I want to make it so whenever you pick up a relic, you get to choose between three relics. That's going to be a really fun one to do. So then, uh, so right now, when you pick up relics in the game, you go to a, like a, ch a, a chest. Go, let's find a chest here in this dungeon. And um, you, you only get what's in the chest basically where, where is the chest here 
Is there no chest in this dungeon? Oh, it's right here. Duh. Okay. So yeah, if I open this chest, it'll pop out the item. It's a great item, acid. That's really awesome. But it would be even cooler as a player if I were to able to choose between three items or four items even. Like, oh, I could choose acid or maybe I want to power up my explosive defense for this run or whatever. It'll really just put the control back into your hands as a player. Where you want to, where you want your build to go, where how you want the run to play out. So that'll be a pretty neat one to do. Okay, duck. Well, hey, that's gonna be it for today's stream. Hey, thanks for watching today's um today's transmission. Yeah, we'll be back next Wednesday with more tomfoolery making the video game Wraithbinder. So thanks a lot, person. Check it later.